Okay. Uh, let's make sure that this thing is live. Are we doing it? Is it happening? Yes, it is. We're here. We did it. It's looking like we're probably going to be 30 seconds or so behind. And... Oh, man, my computer is running kind of slow. It's okay. I've been doing a lot with it. Okay. Let's do the usual shares that we normally do. Uh, welcome to the stream if you're popping in. And uh, if you are popping in, I hope that you will uh, share this out with some people. Let some folks know about what is going on. Uh, I'm going to do that myself. So this is the awkward portion of the live stream. Uh, bear with me. Hang in there. Stay on the video. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the share button. Tell some folks we're talking about this stuff. Uh, and uh, once I get this, these, these shares underway, uh, we will kick things off. Apologize, my computer is running a little bit slower, so the shares might take just a few extra minutes. Uh, doing my best here to get the get the word out. Invite some people, drop some links in the comments. So if you're if you're coming in, hang in there. I will uh, be kicking this thing off in just a moment, just a moment here. So don't go anywhere. Hang tight. While you're while you're hanging tight and hitting the shares and the likes and all that sort of stuff, uh, if you could uh, leave a comment, let me know how you're doing. We usually do a check in at the top of these live streams. Uh, let me know what you're going through, what you're looking forward to, uh, how you're doing in in our current uh, pandemic situation, and uh, we'll we'll go from there. I think I can probably, yeah, go to maybe one or two more groups. Ba -da -da -da. Okay. Let's drop in a few comments with some links. Uh, about donating you can um you can make a donation if you would like to become a sustaining member if you would like to the link for that is has been posted um i have an upcoming virtual stand-up comedy show that if you're around it'd be rad if you made it posting that in there as well um and my new stand-up comedy album is coming out in just a few weeks, and you can pre-order it from the band camps uh, for a dollar. And uh, yeah, that uh, those are all those are all there. I'm going to send out the last uh, couple things here. We're going to send out some invites to some people that uh, check out this show. Make sure we uh, sound the alarms uh, because here's the thing: uh, sometimes even if you are a uh, regular viewer of my stuff. It doesn't always tell you uh, that I'm going live. Uh, it kind of that's that's sort of how the suppression game works. That's sort of how they they operate, and it uh, it's annoying. It sucks. Not gonna lie. So it just means that doing this extra effort stuff is necessary. So if you're if you're watching, I hope you stick around. 
give me just a moment and uh, we will be kicking this thing off doing um, doing the old uh, check-ins and then diving right into this episode. So please bear with me. I'm just one man doing all of these things to make sure I get the word out uh, to the people that normally uh, tune into the show. So hang tight. We're going to be kicking things off. And I apologize. Uh, my computer is running a little sluggish. I'm probably going to have to do a little restart once once we're done with this live stream. Um, kept it on for quite some time. So uh, yeah, just uh, just hang tight. We're almost we're almost through doing the doing the shares and the inviting and all of that sh all of that stuff. Uh, so I hope uh, you guys are ready. Uh, oh, let's see. Okay. I think we're almost done here. All right. I think we're. I think we got. We got. We got the shares out. We got the word out. Oh, I didn't put it into the event. I didn't do that on Sunday either. Totally spaced on putting it into the event. Uh, so let me do that real quick. And then we'll be we'll be all set. There are some people that pay attention to that uh, that Facebook event with all of the. Uh, live streamy stuff. Post. Once that's up. Okay, cool. So that's up. Uh, I'm going to be trying a couple things. So people that are in the uh, people that are watching, I'm going to need your help for just a minute because I'm going to share my screen and I need to double check to see if this feature is going to work or if we're going to have to adapt. So, so, so tell me if you see the presentation when it goes to full. Leave a comment if you can see that. I'm going to need your help. So I'm going to hit play on this thing. And I can't see when I'm in this mode, I can't really see the screen or anything. Uh, so let me know if you kind of saw that presentation uh, pop up or or not. Leave a comment, and then we're going to kick things off uh, with. Uh, we'll do the check in. We'll we'll kick things off with the check in as we always do. Uh, I am warm and sweaty. That's that's sort of the status of me right now. <laughs> uh, I got some exercising in, uh, and then I'm, I'm planning on going on a walk. And it's it's a nice warm day. Um, so uh, yeah, I am uh, I am warm and sweaty. That's 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 how I feel. Uh, mildly overwhelmed with everything that's going on, um, but uh, other than that, I mean, I'm doing okay. You know, I'm I'm excited about uh, about the things that are that are happening. Um, so I I've got a bunch of stuff going on. I've got this show coming up on Friday, this virtual stand up show, and uh, I hope some folks will buy some tickets. Uh, to that show, uh, and the reason you have to buy tickets to that show is because that is how we are going to make sure things are secure. So grab those tickets. Uh, it'll I'll be able to email you an hour before the show um, all of the details for it. It's a it's a pretty fun time. Um, I had a really good time with it. So uh, yeah, grab the grab the, the links are in the description of the video and in the comment section as well. Uh, so yeah, it, it'd be awesome if some folks, uh, got, got tickets to that, uh, my album's coming out so you can pre-order that from Bandcamp exclusively. Uh, Bandcamp is the, um, is the thing that gives the most back to the artist. So that's kind of why I push the Bandcamp more often. Um, they're, they're a little bit more artist friendly than Spotify or, uh, you know, uh, but the iTunes and the Google plays and all that sort of stuff. So uh, that, that link will give you a, a, a pre-order to the, to the album on Bandcamp and you get bonus tracks on Bandcamp too. So, uh, so there is that, there is that fun stuff as well. Um, I'm going to try this share screen thing, uh, just one more time. 
because I just want to make sure that it's going to work. Uh, I'm a little, I'm a little nervous about it because I've never done it before. And the only way to see whether it's going to work or not is to run it through live and check on my phone if that's going to work there. So part of the delay for just a moment, uh, and kind of see what's, uh, what it's doing there. Oh, cool. So it does work. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for, thank you for your patience while I tried to kind of maneuver around that, uh, that situation there. So, uh, okay. I think, uh, I think we are, we are ready to, to rock and roll and dive into, uh, the, the subject matter for the day. And there's only one thing that I'm going to talk about today, uh, because I've got so much other stuff going on. I spend a, a good deal of time kind of looking into this, this story. Um, this comes from the gray zone. The gray zone is an excellent publication, uh, that I, uh, highly recommend to folks. Uh, if you, if you are looking for something, um, less establishment, uh, less, uh, I, you know, it, Everybody's going to say that they have a bias of some kind, but I, I really think that they have a bias to make sure that people are um, seeing things that sort of the intelligence community doesn't want you to see. They cover a lot of stuff about Venezuela and what's really happening there. They've been on the ground. Uh, Max Blumenthal, uh, Anya Parmpil, Ben Norton, Aaron Mate, all these guys are great. These are, uh, these are like the real journalists that I think people should be paying attention to. So there's a reporting that came out basically uh, that proved how deep the spying operation on Julian Assange went and how the um, basically the mercenary uh, outfits that was uh, set to in, initially they were set to guard Julian Assange at the Ecuadorian embassy. They ended up uh, turning around and uh, and spying on him instead. Um, and all this was revealed in court in 2019. So um the group is called UC Global. UC Global is uh, uh, basically a mercenary group uh, run by this guy named David Morales. Uh, Morales is, uh, he, he wants to be the next Blackwater. That's what he basically came out and said. He said that he wanted to be the next Blackwater. Um, and, uh, you know, Blackwater is essentially the hired guns. They have their, their private military installation. Uh, run by Eric Prince, who is um, the brother of Betsy DeVos, who runs our education system. <laughs> uh, interesting how that plays out, right? What the family dynamics of that is. Um, so they were hired to be, um, they, they, he, he wanted to be the next uh, next Blackwater there, uh, which is basically like saying, like, I, I want to be the next Adolf Eichmann is basically what that's like. I, I would like to be the next Adolf Eichmann because I really like that guy's tenacity. He's got good gusto, you know, like that's, that's basically like, why do you like who nobody should admire Eric Prince. That guy's a fucking merchant. He's a hired goon, you know, like that guy's a, the, that guy, he's, he's, he's a mercenary. Why would you look up to, to being a, you know, why, why would you look up to a mercenary and be like, that's the thing I want to do. I want to be, I want to get paid to murder people. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> so. Uh, in 2016, David Morales uh, goes to the security fair in Las Vegas, uh, and then he basically gets signed on uh, to guard uh, Sheldon Adelson's $70 million yacht because you need to prove, how do you prove that you're rich? Uh, you buy a $70 million yacht, and then you have to hire somebody to protect your fucking $70 million yacht, right? Uh, and Sheldon Adelson is a big Republican donor, he helped the Trump campaign a whole lot. Um, he's one of the billionaires that helped the Trump campaign. Uh, Robert Mercer is another one. The Mercers are also uh, notorious for helping uh, the the Trump administration as well, um, especially getting you know get getting him to become the president. Kind of notorious for that. So the peculiar thing about this is that Sheldon Adelson is so rich that he has his own security uh, within the casinos itself. Um, so why would he need to hire somebody else? Uh, well, it, the, because that's a front. Uh, David Morales went back and basically said that Dave shifted over to the dark side to his employees. When he came back from this 2016 Las Vegas security fair, 
he said that they're 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 shifting over to the dark side is what he says right and he's very excited about it um that uh he's got contracts with the americans and uh you know at, at first it seemed like it was just guarding adelson's um adelson's yacht which already has guards um so it essentially became a, a, a front uh, a, a covert operation uh, a cover if you will for working with the cia and throughout this whole thing to his staff uh, morales refers to them as the american client uh, or american friends that's what he continues to refer to them as um and this is uh this is pretty much this, i mean all this stuff is like it, the 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 shifting and the and the way that they kind of treated Julian Assange goes in line with um, really with what um, Mike Pompeo uh, believes in. Mike Pompeo it, it does not like Julian Assange, for lack of a better term. He fucking hates the guy, right? Like he said some pretty nasty things uh, to pump to to uh, or rather about Julian Assange. Um, and, uh, it, you know, um, Pompeo took, took charges of CIA in 2017. Um, David Morales ends up becoming this hired gun, uh, around the same time. Um, specifically because he has ties to the Ecuadorian embassy. So, uh, Pompeo it has been quoted to say this. So we're going to look at our, our thing here. He has been quoted to say, uh, so this is, this is from the article uh, written by Max Blumenthal. Uh, the former Republican congressman from Kansas opened his speech with an extended tirade against the Philip Agees of the world, referring to the CIA whistleblower who handed over thousands of classified documents to leftist publishers that revealed shocking details of illegal uh, U.S. regime change and assassination plots around the world. Alluding to AG's contemporary quote-unquote soulmates, Pompeo declared uh, the only thing they don't share with AG is the need for a publisher. All they require now is a smartphone and internet access. In today's digital environment, they can disseminate uh, stolen U.S. secrets instantly around the world to terrorists, dictators, hackers, and anyone else seeking to do us harm. Um, this is a very false narrative that that Pompeo is um, essentially delivering because uh, you know uh, people like Edward Snowden, people like uh, Chelsea Manning, and reality winner these people don't just go around selling this information that's kind of what they make it sound like they, they they make it sound like these whistleblowers uh sell the information to the next highest bidder in fact they don't and even assange does it assange gets these um does what every other journalistic organization does they get information from their sources and they check their sources and then they publish them they publish the information that 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 they receive right so they're they're publishers what, what he's saying is that they don't need publishers they now he's he's kind of taking away what julian assange actually is he's taking the title of what julian assange really is away from julian assange to make him sound more nefarious than he actually is um edward snowden gave it to reporters American and British reporters. He didn't sell it to, you know, um, enemies of the state, quote unquote. So all this stuff is um, what what he's saying is is creating a false narrative, uh, which is which is very typical of of uh, the CIA and especially people like Mike Pompeo. Uh, so our next slide reads: The CIA director made no secret about the identity of his target. Uh, it's time to call out WikiLeaks for what it really is, a non-state hostile intelligence service often abetted by state actors like Russia. He rumbled from the podium. But this is, but again, like none of that has been proven. Uh, and he's also received, it re revealed um, Russian oligarchy crimes. For the next several minutes, Pompeo ranted against Assange, branding him as a narcissist, a fraud, a coward. The right-wing Republican even quo uh, quoted criticism of WikiLeaks publish, publish WikiLeaks publisher by The Intercept's Sam Biddle. There's, it's weird because even in the sort of the more progressive uh, lefty news circles that they kind of go down and attack uh, Julian Assange, even though I think, I mean, Glenn Greenwald from The Intercept himself is, um, stands by 
uh, whistleblowers and uh, has has supported uh, Julian Assange. There's still people within the organization that uh, you know th think that what Julian Assange is doing is uh, harmful and not good, right? Next, Pompeo pledged a quote unquote long-term campaign of countermeasures against WikiLeaks. We have to recognize that we can no longer allow Assange and his co colleagues to the latitude to use free speech values against us. To to them, the space to crush us with misappropriated secrets is a perversion of what our great constitution stands for. It ends now, he vowed, which is big talk because this is an organization that has on uh, multiple times um, trounced all over the constitution. They get, they, they, they trounce all over the fourth amendment constantly, constantly. And now they're trying to take somebody's, you know, essentially saying that they're, they're going to take free speech away from this guy, uh, which means what? That if somebody from, if, if an organization from the States decides to start doing that, where they start revealing, you know, nefarious secrets about the CIA and how the CIA runs coups in countries that we don't have any business being in because they fucking do, that they're going to call, they're going to take free speech rights away from them. Um, you know, this is a very dangerous, dangerous line to walk it for, for some, for, 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 for one, uh, a Michael Pompeo. Uh, you know, and and he's vowing it ends now. Like what? Like this is this? He Mike Pompeo is like talking like he's in a fucking spy thriller, uh, when really I don't think he is. Really, uh, he's pissed off because uh, Julian Assange revealed uh, Vault Seven, which uh, I don't know if I get to in this next one or not. But but he but he talks about Vault Seven. Vault Seven essentially revealed that. Um, smart technology was being used as listening devices is, is sort of the long and short of it. And, uh, you know, he's, he was super fucking pissed off that that happened. Uh, so this last one says, uh, th uh, though Pompeo said he recognized that the CIA is legally prohibited from spying on people through electronic surveillance in the United States, he seemed to have already put into motion an aggressive program to spy not only on Assange, but all on his American friends, lawyers, and virtually everyone in his immediate vicinity. Carried out by UC Global, the campaign entailed recording private conversations of U.S. targets opening their phones and photographing their personal information and even stealing their, their email passwords. There, there's uh, countless times, uh, and we're going to get into that in, in just a moment here, um, uh, you know, is there's countless times and countless pieces of evidence that, uh, that Max Blumenthal outlines, out, uh, outlines in his, in his uh, reporting uh, of where they did that and how they did that, right? So let's kind of go into that. How did... Um, how did UC Global end up spying on uh, Julian Assange? So Julian Assange was granted asylum by Rafael Correa, who was a more leftist leader of uh, of Ecuador. He was it, he. It's complicated. I did a piece about this uh, about a year ago, almost exactly a year ago. I, I think I released it around uh, June or so. But basically, talked about um, how. Um, you know, Rafael Correa kind of used Julian Assange to uh, to curry some favor, essentially, um, because Rafael Correa was not doing particularly well with the with with the uh, with the more progressive left side because he had gone up against the indigenous community um, in um, in Ecuador, right, uh, by taking away their lands. Uh, to use oil to help the economy of the country. This is sort of this is this has been known to happen in the Latin American countries where they they try to uh, nationalize their oil um, and try to use that as a way to kind of help their people. And the sacrifice ends up being that some indigenous lands uh, get destroyed. So this is what was happening with Rafael Correa and Julian Assange was seen as this champion of free speech. So by granting Julian Assange asylum, he became this champion of free speech. Uh, because he basically tried to like ban, um, if I remember correctly, I have to double check my information, but if I remember correctly, like Rafael Correa just, was like trying to ban fucking uh, the indigenous languages from being taught in schools. Like it was a bad move. It just, it was like a total bad move. Um, so all these activists kind of fucking went after him. And when, once he granted Julian Assange uh, asylum and citizenship, he became an official citizen of, of Ecuador as well. He kind of became a champion of the left again. It, it, it boosted his his profile. 
Now, uh, Korea had to flee Ecuador because there were like murder charges against him, I think, uh, and like conspiracy charges against him. So he had to flee Ecuador, and uh, Lenin Moreno uh, took over and became the president of uh, of Ecuador. Moreno ended up being a Trojan horse because he fucking hated Julian Assange, uh, just like Mike Pompeo, and uh, and and Pom and basically basically levied the fact that Julian Assange got citizenship as an as an asylum seeker, and and, and we this fucking narrative of like oh he's he you know he's taking resources away from Ecuador he's not good for Ecuador, uh, and and all of a sudden like it, it became like they were protecting somebody that valued free speech, this publisher, and then Moreno came into power, and then on a dime, it switched over to being this pro-U.S. narrative of, like, we got to crush this dude. We got to take down Julian Assange, right? Um, so that kind of gave uh, David Morales of UC Global an opportunity uh, to basically use Moreno's people within the within the embassy to... to it takes buying initiatives on. Uh, so Morala, Mor Morales, David Morales, uh, used this to ensure that all of the CCTVs uh, had sound equipment, unseen sound equipment placed on it. And he spied on everybody that came in and out of the embassy to go meet Assange, his friends, his lawyers, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, people that wanted to cover, d doctors that came in, journalists that wanted to talk to him about what was going on. Um, things of that, things of that nature. And Julian Assange was getting a little paranoid about this stuff, right? He would like mention to his lawyers, like he, he wanted to have like white noise machines um, uh, during the meetings uh, to kind of disrupt the void, uh, disrupt the sound so that, so that these listening devices couldn't pick up on them. And they kind of thought maybe he's going a little paranoid by being in, in total isolation for seven years. But, but in reality, I mean, he was being spied on uh, at this point too, in 2017, when all this stuff is starting to happen, when Pompeo's making these these grandiose speeches, Lenin Moreno's coming in charge, and uh, you know uh, the the spying stuff is going on within the embassy, his health is is starting to be in major decline too. Like he's got uh, a shoulder problem. He's he's got cataracts in his eyes, because if you don't look at a horizon, you can you can create real vis major visual problems for yourself. Um, he's got uh, dental issues. He's got depression, suicidal tendencies. He's got high levels of anxiety. He is a risk. He is um, he, he's a medical risk right now. All of that stuff is going on on top of the paranoia, right? So uh, they also bugged like the women's bathroom. Uh, they they put like these magnetic um, sound uh, magnetic recorders in the women's bathroom because Julian Assange would have meetings in the women's bathroom because he's like, I, maybe they won't fucking spy on me there. Right. Like, I just want to talk to my lawyer about what we're going to do about my case because they kind of knew that this espionage uh, act bullshit was going to come about. So um, what Morales would do is these files, like all the files that he would get, from the CCTV and the audio recordings that he would take would go into a Dropbox folder, which would get sent uh, to a, to the American client. And when the files were too big to upload into the Dropbox, he would personally uh, he would personally fly to the United States to deliver all the surveillance information to the CIA or AKA the American client, his friends in America. So if it didn't fit into the Dropbox, which is kind of nice, that these that these mercenary outfits are basically using the same technology that college kids use to to, to work on a group project, you know that's good. It just kind of shows like these mercenaries, just like us, you guys. These mercenary groups are just like us, you know. They're just like you and me, you guys. You know how you you know how like you and me orchestrate this giant plan you know, with uh, on a global scale with like three different governments to take down the life of one man. Like you guys know, that's like a regular Tuesday for everybody. You know, I did, I did that. I did that last Tuesday. You know, that's just, this is what you got to do, baby. You know, that's just regular life. This is regular life. They're just like you and me. So, so the CIA was, was spying on everybody that met uh, with Julian Assange. And things started flying off the rails, um, you know, ar around this time. 
uh, because um, they they started I'm trying to think of what which which part I want to talk about first here. Maybe I'll show you guys this slide. So this is this is basically what um, what they did. Uh, they they started uh, taking people's phones. They started uh, taking photos of people's passwords. Anybody that visited Julian Assange, they were doing this too. So here's here's a um, here here here's a a, a, a little uh, snippet of that. A little little uh, anecdote of that, right? Stefania. Uh, Mar Maruzzi, I apologize if I'm pronouncing that name properly, Maruzzi, an Italian journalist who visited Julian Assange regularly at the embassy in London, remembered relaxed encounters with minimum security and friendly interactions with embassy staff for at least the first five years of the WikiLeaks founder's stay. It was in December 2017 that everything changed. During a visit to interview Assange that month, the Spanish security guards from UC Global demanded Maruzi hand over her backpack and all her belongings inside for the first time. She protested the new seemingly arbitrary procedure, but to no avail. They seized everything, Maruzi to told the Gray Zone. Uh, they took my two telephones, one of which was encrypted, my iPod, and many USB sticks. There was no way to get my backpack back. The guard told me, don't worry, everything will be fine. No one will access your material or open your backpack. I was very suspicious. I wasn't even allowed to bring a pen inside to take notes. That's that's the level of like paranoid security um, that they were kind of going through, in uh, you know to kind of make sure like who's coming in, who they need to keep an eye on. Um, they spied on uh, Stella Morris, who they as they at that time they were tr trying to figure out like who he was engaged with and stuff. Uh, Stella Morris, mother of Julian Assange's kids, we know that now. Um, and then eventually, this thing ramped up to uh, David Morales was like trying to plot an assassination of Julian Assange, uh, and once once the the spying of of Stella Morris and, and Assange's kids and this assassination plot thing happened. Uh, that's whenever the, the staff at UC Global were like, this is too much. This is going a little bit too far. So they actually, one of the, the, the staff member that was specifically assigned to Stella Morris went over to her, caught her as she was leaving the embassy and was like, yo, stop bringing your kids here because they're spying on you and you're, you, you know, like the life of your, um, uh, the life of your kids might be at risk. They also wanted to, the CIA wanted to do like DNA testing too. This part is kind of wild and it's like hilariously wild. They wanted to prove that Stella Morris, who, who was bringing kids in, that those kids were Julian Assange. So they wanted to do a DNA test. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the CIA was like, "Yo, get some dirt, di get some dirty diapers, uh, and we'll do a DNA test b using uh, the poop from the diapers." Which is like, who signs up for that job, right? From from UC Global, like, did they send an intern to be like, "All right, jump in there and get some poopies, get those poopies out of there," right? And then they and then they had to be like, "Hey, I don't think fecal matter has DNA," and they were like, "What about a pacifier?" Do you think you could snag one of those pacifiers right out of the baby's mouth? That seems to be fine. <laughs> like this, this seems to be a cool thing that CIA should do. The the part I think the 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 sort of more incriminating um, thing to to basically take that trial, uh, the trial that's that's been delayed to September, and it and it would basically like throw the trial out is the fact that UC Global spied on Julian Assange and his lawyers, which means that there's no confidentiality there. Um, so, you know, under the Espionage Act, the, the British courts, because of UC Global, knows exactly what the litigative plans of Julian Assange's legal team is, and there's no private 
you know, uh, lawyer client confidentiality anymore because they fucking spied on the meeting. And now we have, uh, and there's evidence of it. <laughs> this all happened uh, because, so the, the, the people that had a problem with, uh, with David Morales ended up coming out in 2019 and, and the Spanish courts ended up proving that Morales is working for the CIA to spy on Assange and his associates, uh, including Randy Credico, including his lawyer, including uh, his friends that would come in. Uh, Pam Anderson, the actress, uh, uh, she, she, was, she was spied on as well. And the former employees of UC Global were basically like, this is some bullshit. They testified against him. They revealed all this information and basically said like what Morales was doing was immoral. And Morales, whenever this sort of stuff came out, <laughs> this is also another kind of like hilarious of like, this, this next part kind of sounds like David Morales expects to have a movie written about him so that this can be like an iconic scene in the fucking movie. But apparently uh, he like stood up and he ripped up, opened his shirt and he puffed his chest out and basically said, I am wholeheartedly mercenary. Which fucking in, in 10 years, there's going to be a movie made about David Morales just called mercenary. And that's going to be like the big trailer bump, right? Just him going, bruh, I am mercenary. Like that's going to be a big, that's going to be the trailer bump for sure. Because that's what, I mean, that's kind of what this guy fucking expects. And I guarantee you the CIA will weave the narrative that somehow David Morales is the hero in this situation. You know, the guy that wanted to steal a child's pacifier? You know, the guy that wanted to dumpster die for, for, for a baby's diaper? You know, the guy that plotted an assassination attempt uh, against the, a publisher? That guy, the CIA, is like, this guy's a hero. <laughs> we want this guy to be the, the hero. <laughs> It's it's ridiculous to me that people will support the CIA um, over Julian Assange. I want to play a clip uh, from because because they didn't stop at the assassination attempt. They also um, had robberies involved as well. So if you give me one moment, I'm going to um, share something from uh, Aaron Mate's uh, interview with. Um, Max Blumenthal here. If you give me one moment, I'll be able to find it. Boom, there it is. And uh, and what's important here is um, to listen to what the CIA says. Mike Pompeo, the director of the CIA, says uh, about the way they they conduct their business. And you know, if you're one of these people that's like, well, Julian Assange, that guy's, you know, hacker, he's a bad guy. Or, and, and, you know, Pompeo's got a point. We should be, we should be going after uh, somebody like, uh, like Julian Assange. Maybe, maybe this might be the, the thing that clears it up for you. Here, here's what Max Blumenthal says. Uh, and what he's going to talk about here is what David Morales did uh, or, or what he instructed his people to do um, to, towards a judge in, in Spain. Right. Uh, and, and they like basically enacted a robbery. That's where we're going to start. I hope you guys David can hear Morales this. proposed robbing Garcon's offices in order to get all their files about defending Assange. And that two weeks after he proposed that three men wearing hoods broke into those offices and stole no money or valuables and shuffled through files. This was reported in Spanish mainstream media that that took place. So we're talking about criminality. We're talking about abuse of power, um, dirty tricks. As Mike Pompeo bragged at Texas A&M last year, yeah. uh, I was a CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we stole. And he, I'm sure he was referring directly to this operation. Uh, when I was a cadet, What's the first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's like, we, we, had, we, had, entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. 
this should in yeah it should remind you of the glory of the american experiment he says the lying the cheating and the stealing should remind you of the glory of the american experiment that's what the american experiment is it's getting away with lying cheating and stealing that's what the cia does and Julian Assange is revealing all this stuff, and for that he is being put on a criminal trial. The the <laughs> the people that fucking uh, were were sent out to spy on him, plotted an assassination attempt on him, illegally spied on him and his lawyers, were basically trying to like steal shit from his child. <laughs> That's fine, uh, and then like literally went in to to. Um, against a judge and tried to like steal shit from them specific to Assange's trial. So, uh, this should immediately set him free. He should not be in Belmarsh. He should not be going through this trial. Everything the CIA did, everything that America is doing under the espionage act is false is a moot point it's all bullshit and what should happen when we go into september is the judge in in the uk should look at all this evidence and be like yeah we have to throw this fucking case out because you guys did a bunch of crazy illegal shit to to prove a point that doesn't exist you manufactured a fucking point and, and you should set this dude free. You should send him back home so he can be, he can be, continue being a publisher to an, an organization that has never had to retract a, a story. Not once, right? Like he's never fucking retracted his story. He's never had to run a retraction. On point and accurate. This is the evidence. And if they don't, and if they don't, if they come out and they continue this trial and they go through this dog and pony show and they continue to play, you know, uh, to 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 treat him the way that they've been treating him, essentially torturing him because that's a, that's kind of what they've been doing. They've been torturing Julian Assange. Then it kind of shows that the global justice system is skewed and doesn't give a shit about free speech or the free press. I think that'll be glaring evidence of that. And you know. I, I, it always kind of surprises me that um, that issues like this of security and things of that sort are not taken as seriously in, in the States. You hear a lot of excuses thrown around. Um, you know, oh, well, if you have nothing to hide, then you're fine kind of thing. Um, the the notion of privacy is is really something that Americans uh, take for granted or 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 they just or they just don't care, you know. Well, I'm I'm good. Well, the government can take a look at whatever the fuck I'm doing, but they're always the same people that are just like the government's trying to take my rights, and it's like this is taking your rights. In fact, the government already did that. The Senate is expanding uh, the Patriot Act uh, to. Warrantless searches of web browsing data. They don't need a warrant to look through your web browsing data now. The word patriot should be taken out of that act. Because this is not patriot. This is not patriotism. This is warrantless spying on the American people. This is, once again, making the American citizens guilty before proven innocent. When it's not supposed to be that way. But but Mike Pompeo is innocent before proven guilty, even though we have proof of all of the crazy shit that he's done to Julian Assange. Mike Pompeo should be on trial for torturing Julian Assange, for hiring UC Global to, to spy and torture Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy. This is like a global fucking espionage game. And Mike Pompeo should be brought up on charges of, of, of that shit. That clip we just showed earlier, like people are fucking applauding. They're just like, yeah, fucking cheaters. They're great. Huh? This guy, get him a fucking award.
th- th- this shit is what they reveal. What the what the Patriot Act will do, and um, how these governments really fuck over their people. That's what Julian Assange and WikiLeaks and Snowden and uh, all of these people. That's what they reveal. And and people should be should should stand up and champion these people. They should they should support people like Julian Assange, not put them on trial. So, uh, you know, the government's trying to take your rights. This is one of the rights that they're trying to take. Uh, and and it's it's astounding to me that there is uh, very little peep from from the people screaming about their rights. That uh, when they come to take your privacy rights away, they eh, nobody give a shit. They're they're just fine. Yeah, whatever. They don't really give a shit. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm going to look at some of these comments. Uh, Mark Viola, very funny comedian, Mark Viola. Uh, the first amendment only applies to things we like to hear. That is a fair state. That is a, that is an accurate way that America likes to look at things. Huh? Um, Christy, Christina Turner. Thank you for watching Christina. I appreciate it. Uh, they held me hostage since 1992 for reporting CIA military assaults and war crimes and hacked my phone and accounts and stole my patents and property and inheritance. Which is like, it's bullshit. They shouldn't, they shouldn't be treating people like this. I'm so sorry you had to go through that. That's awful. That, uh, that super sucks. Uh, it sounds like when I worked for General Dynamics Information Technology and the Census Bureau. Oh, when they were taking your, your stuff away. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. Uh, again, it's, it's just, I mean, it's just like the global level of the Patriot Act is essentially what they did um, to, to Julian Assange. And uh, yeah, again, uh, my, my viewpoint is that nobody should be treated like this. And uh, we should really be put, putting Mike Pompeo on the stands uh, for why he violated um, Julian Assange's rights, why he, why he violated a bunch of global laws. That's the question we should be asking. Um, and we should be standing up for Julian Assange against people like David Morales, against people like Sheldon Adelson and Mike Pompeo. Uh, so yeah, that is, uh, that is our show. That is the episode. Uh, we're going to wrap things up. Uh, like I said, I have a new album. The links are in the comments. The links are in the description of the show. You can download it for uh, a buck for a dollar. Uh, it's, uh, there's, there's, there's stuff about Assange in the album. I think you guys will enjoy it. I think it's, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll like the album. Um, May 22nd, I'm doing a citizen revolution, virtual stand up comedy show. Get your tickets for that show. Uh, tickets are five bucks minimum. Um, if you're in a financially precarious situation, message me, I'm happy to give you a code, but regardless of whether you have a free ticket or not, um, I, I, you, you have to get a ticket because that's how I'm going to be able to communicate with you and give you the um, login information for Zoom with the password and everything uh, so that we prevent any sort of um, unwanted visitors because Zoom has had problems with that. So it's imperative that you guys get tickets even if you get a, a code for free. Sustaining members uh, get a free ticket. There is a code in your Patreon. Check your Patreons. Uh, check that email. So, uh, yeah, uh, grab your tickets May 22nd. That's this Friday. Uh, spots are limited. So, so grab them now and, uh, come hang out with me. Uh, everything will be sent to you an hour before showtime. Showtime is at 9 PM Eastern. That's 8 PM central, 7 PM mountain, 6 PM Pacific. Uh, I hope to see you guys there. Uh, we'll be talking about UBI. We'll be talking about, uh, psychology and, uh, uh vaccines and, uh, citizenship and a bunch of other stuff. So, uh, I hope you guys can uh, can uh, come come hang out. It'd be cool. That's and it's kind of how I'm going to be uh, making my living right now uh, is basically donations, sustaining memberships in these virtual stand up comedy shows. So uh, till till we kind of get out of this weird global situation that we're in, that is going to be the primary way that um, that I'm earning a living uh, doing these shows. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm unfortunately off the road for, for the duration, uh, which sucks. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hoping, uh, I'm hoping you guys come through, uh, you guys so far have come through. You guys have been super fucking awesome. Um, and each of these citizen revolution shows too, are going to be different. They're, they're, each of them are, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm doing different stuff with them each time. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I hope you guys will, uh, will, will come join me there. Um, Go to my website for all that information. 
ramennoodlescomedy.com. It's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com. Uh, other than that, I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you guys are staying well. Uh, Till the next one, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.